Hola everyone, welcome to this next lecture. Uh, today we're going to be talking about health and health disorders as we age. And uh, as the uh, previous lecture made clear, uh, we have pretty much an arc, which is that with just about all of the uh, health uh, um, and health uh, disorders issues, there tends to be a, a incremental increase as we go through our adult years, to the surprise of nobody, I'm sure. Um, with regard to um, uh, the common health conditions, we're going to talk about a bunch of them. Um, your textbook refers to uh, something called a morbidity rate, which is just the rate um, at which death occurs uh, in conjunction with any particular disorder. And um, as we get to the older age, um, uh, we get more and more of a uh, distinction between what um, is referred to as acute conditions versus chronic conditions. Uh, acute conditions, uh, obviously, something comes on and it's it's uh, um, it's quick sometimes and uh, sometimes very serious. Um, whereas um, in getting to old age, more and more adults have um, chronic conditions. In other words. They're not life-threatening, uh, but they're chronically um, present uh, and um, some more serious than others. And that chronic presence of disease requires an ongoing management and mitigation of whatever condition we're talking about. Uh, if I could just give you a quick example. Um, obviously, if, if uh, I was in a car accident, that would be acute if I uh, fell and um, um, broke my hip. And that meant that uh, for the next couple of years, I was going to be in physical therapy, trying to uh, rehab myself back. That would be a chronic condition. Now, the good news is um, uh, with uh, better um, health care, with people uh, having more information, people eating better, exercising regularly, um, uh, managing um, uh, illnesses better, uh, regular doctor visits, uh, it's not as bad as uh, clearly it could be. In fact, 40% of people, even over the age of 75, uh, so, you know, approaching half, self-rate their health situation as um, excellent or very good. So it's not uh, an inevitable decline. There is a very good chance that um, all of you listening to this, and including myself, uh, may be in relatively um, um, good um, physical and psychological health uh, as we age into our older years. Now let's talk about some some uh, of the big uh, uh, physical disorders. Clearly, heart disease or cardiovascular disease is um, right up there in terms of the most important in terms of its uh, um, impact and in terms of the numbers of people affected by. Um, cardiovascular disease. Uh, atherosclerosis is simply a condition in which the, the uh, veins slowly and it, uh, um, constrict and um, uh, uh, over a long period of time uh, is likely to cause some um, cardiovascular disease. It, uh, it, it's in some ways preventable um, in terms of diet and exercise and regularly taking care of yourself, but uh, clearly the risk factors, um, there may be some genetic risk factors, but obesity is a risk factor, stress is a risk factor, uh, and numerous others. Uh, cardiovascular disease does affect uh, uh, men a little more than women, but um, women seem to be, over the last 20 years, um, uh, catching up, or to put it another way, uh, heart disease among women um, seems to have increased proportionally um, more than it has for men. Now, maybe it was because for men we were high to begin with and there was not too much uh, where to go, but um, it is a big one and uh, um, it's an important one and it's one in which prevention is hugely um, uh, impactful over the long time. So by way of application, if you have heart disease in your family, um, mother, father, grandmother, and grandfather, um, in some ways, it's not ever too early to address uh, lifestyle habits and lifetime, lifestyle um, activities um, to slow down um, uh, and uh, impact uh, the likelihood 
uh, that um, heart disease will kick in sooner rather than later. So risk, risk factors, again, apart from genetics, can be addressed um, with uh, a kind of long-term um, commitment to uh, um, uh, engaging in healthy um, lifestyle activities. Cancer is um, um, right up there with heart disease, the second leading cause of death, again, for both men and women. The, the great news about cancer over the last 30 or 40 years is a cancer diagnosis, again, uh, a generation or two ago, was almost an immediate diagnosis, of, you know, kind of a life, uh, a life sentence, if you will, with um, the huge increases in ability to treat cancer. In fact, many cancers um, um, uh, rarely result in death, or at least result in death within 5, 10, even 20 years. Uh, um, so, um, cancer can be treated. Uh, there are certain cancers that are uh, a little more difficult and um, clearly are uh, a lot more serious. Um, but cancer, like heart disease, um, is at least uh, somewhat amenable to risk factors. Um, the obvious one here is that we know that uh, one way to cut way down on uh, um, can lung cancer, throat cancer, uh, esophageal cancer, it's called, uh, um, cancers of the mouth, is to, to avoid smoking. We do know that, for instance, drinking is associated with increased rates of cancer. We do know that, know that stress is uh, 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 a diet. These are all um, risk factors. Um, and at this point, it's important to talk about what we call epigenetic inheritance, which is simply that um, um, with epigenetics, epigen uh, even if you have uh, cancer in your family, say two generations away, um, the uh, environmental influences, um, this is the basics of epigenetics um, that you engage in or that your parents engaged in, um, um, either increase or decrease your um, risk for that uh, predisposition to show up as actual cancer um, so that we know that uh, um, cancer uh, risk can be decreased by um, healthy lifestyle habits. And so as with the heart disease, um, uh, prevention is way better than treatment, although um, as someone who has been through um, a, a, a cancer and um, got it treated and got surgery and uh, got it operated on and, and basically haven't worried about it for the last 15 years with occasional, um, you know, a follow-up, um, uh, most cancers, again, are, are uh, um, treatable and are not a life sentence. Diabetes is um, um, a risk for quite a few people. This is one um, um, disease of, of older age, although we all know that diabetes isn't only um, something that affects older age people. But diabetes has been the one thing which has certainly increased over time. And uh, it's simply an inability to um, adequately and accurately metabolize um, insulin for being able to function. Um, I, I have a father who's 86 years old, and um, um, he, he was first diagnosed with diabetes um, at 84, two years ago, which surprised everybody. Um, and, um, but uh, he had some risk factors. There was no diabetes in his family that he was aware of, but of course his parents died when they were much younger, um, in their early 70s. So perhaps if they had lived longer, it would have showed up. But um, the risk factor that uh, uh, that he had to address was a lifetime of eating um, um, foods that were, well, can I say, uh, fatty foods. He loved butter. So his diet uh, um, was problematic. But for the last two years, he has changed his diet and uh, clearly has to um, test himself several times a day and, and address it. And uh um, I talk to him regularly and he's fine. So diabetes is treatable. Um, the problem becomes when people don't attend to it, don't pay attention. Um, and uh, certainly most of us probably know of um, um, someone who has had to have, for instance, an amputation because of untreated uh, diabetes or just ignoring diet changes. And uh, that, that's the tragedy uh, with regard to that. Alzheimer's disease is something that we hear um, quite a lot about, and it is the fifth leading cause of death um, for people uh, in their 60s and over. Um, and um, sometimes we think of Alzheimer's as not something that kills people. 
um, but it eventually does, um, and uh, that's tragic enough. But uh, perhaps the, the the big difficulty with Alzheimer's is just the years and years sometimes that people suffer with it, um, with dementia, with um, the slow degeneration of uh, memory capability, recognition capability, um, and what Alzheimer's is again, definitely um, genetic and. Uh, um, uh, with regard to um, uh, your brain, it just slowly deteriorates. There's, of course, a variety of different types of disorders of uh, degenerative brain disease. And um, there are, um, apart from the genetic factors, there are some, some other factors that, that uh, seem to have been correlated with that. Um, perhaps some of you have paid attention to um, TMI, uh, uh, Aaron Hernandez, um, being an obvious example of this, the, the uh, tight end for the uh, Patriots. So we do know that um, things like degenerative brain disorders are um, accelerated, if you will, at least the risk, by multiple concussions. Um, and um, we do know, for instance, that um, certain long-term medications, at least in small amounts, have side effects of, um, uh, of, of uh, Alzheimer's and others. I was talking to a colleague recently, and um, um, he he was telling me about recent studies um, that have shown that people that use, for instance, certain sleep medications like Ambien or even use um, uh, Benadryl to sleep um, um, for long periods of time seem to have an increased rate of um, not only Alzheimer's but other uh, degenerative brain disorders. Uh, so, but the problem, of course, is that um, we'd have to ask: Is our sleep disorders um, and Alzheimer's completely separated? Is it the medication, or is the sleep disorder itself an early indicator? So, we we do seem to be at the very beginning. Um, there is is some hope with regard to uh, gene splicing, but uh, we're not there yet. Uh, but it's clearly um, something that no one looks forward to. And um, if you do have grandparents or great-grandparents with Alzheimer's, again, that is a scary thing because of the, of the uh, significance of the genetic risk factors here. Um, there are many other um, age-related diseases uh, uh, that um, you'll read about and we can talk about, some that cause um, greater disabling um, uh, impacts than others. But the, the reality is, um, as my dad calls it, the organ recital, whenever I talk to him, um, you know, when I ask him how he is, uh, he, he just he jokes about how older people, um, ha you know, 90% of their answer is, you know, um, which of their organs is functioning and which doctor is affecting which. Uh, that's my dad. He's got a great sense of humor. Um, but um, the, the reality is... Um, uh, and this is the side effect of us as humans living longer. Um, in the day and age when the average uh, person died in their, say, even late 40s and 50s, which was 100, 100 years ago or so, um, age-related disorders were minimal because no one lived that long. The longer um, we live, um, the more likely um, um, a greater proportion of us are going to significantly have to address physical disorders and, and as we'll talk about here, psychological disorders, but um, it, 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 this is just the, the uh, you know, the, the, um, the consequence of living longer. Now, all things being equal, um, most older people um, uh, in their 80s uh, are glad for the trade-off um, of dealing with a chronic condition or um, um, some other condition as opposed to um, death. Um, not being around. And uh, so um, it's something most of all of us um, can expect. Uh, and because we're living longer, the years between first diagnosis with uh, numerous disorders um, is much longer than it used to be. And again, the reason for that is not that things have gotten worse um, um, necessarily. It's just that um, our ability to intervene and treat um, and to, to slow down or mitigate or impact um, um, the the uh, onset and um, uh, um, impact of the disease has hugely improved. Now, there are some things that are increasing, um, uh, some diseases, I should say, that are increasing. Most of those, though, the conclusion is because we're living longer. Um, so it's the trade-off. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, mental health um, uh, issues because as with um, physical um, 
diseases, uh, we'll put that term in quotes, just about every single um, of the, uh, we'll call them mental uh, disorders or, or uh, increases as we get older uh, as well. Uh, that that um, um, That's true not just in old age, but that's pretty much true um, throughout our lives. The longer you live, the more, um, I say, uh, um, probability you have of um, uh, having um, at least a a period of time in which you're struggling with a mental health issue. Um, that's the nature of um, the world we live in is uh, not only are our bodies affected, um, but our uh, psyches and minds are affected as well. So um, with regard to um, the uh, kind of the big four uh, disorders that um, affect um, old, older people um, in terms of um, number, um, they are anxiety disorders, mood disorders, uh, again, uh, impulse control disorders, which clearly begin for most of us very early on. And uh, so it's a lifetime of treatment um, and substance abuse disorders. And you can see that in terms of lifetime president, uh, precedence, about a, uh, a little less than a third of us over a lifetime um, will struggle with not just anxiety, but an anxiety disorder. And um, uh, so, um, and again, if you scroll, if you uh, uh, go over to the left, excuse me, the right of your screen, you can see that it's about, it's a little less than double um, uh, the impact upon females. And the same thing is true with mood disorders, uh, that uh, mood disorders are a little more common uh, um, among females, a third more common among females than among males. And that is the second um, 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 uh, highest in terms of older age. Um, at about a fifth of us, 20%. Um, percent. And again, with conduct disorders, we're talking about lifetime pre uh, um, pre uh, prevalence. And um, as you would expect, uh, most times conduct and ADHD uh, and explosive disorder and the adult versions of those, uh, um, psychopathy and so on and so forth, those are almost always initially diagnosed um, in the childhood and uh, years. And again, with substance and alcohol um, use, uh, we tend to associate those things with younger people. But um, if I could just say a couple comments um, about that, uh, um, is that that's one of the things that um, um, has increased uh, significantly um, in older uh, people as the uh, um, as the uh, population of baby boomers, which was a huge um, you know bump in the population. Um, went into older age, um, we saw um, pretty uh, significant increases in alcohol and uh, um, some drug use among older people. Um, and um, there's all kinds of uh, wringing of hands as to why that is, because the one thing we can say about uh, alcohol use is that, um, or can I put abuse, is that um, it, it has mu a numerous different impacts. Um, um, on other risk factors, um, as it does when you're younger. You know, if you're using alcohol, um, most people that are abusing alcohol often have what we call comorbidity, which is just um, um, not just alcohol abuse, but um, um, one or two other uh, substance abuse disorders. In addition, alcohol is uh, particularly toxic um, in large amounts for physical um, deterioration and so the use of alcohol again with any of those other physical uh, ailments of old age is particularly problematic and um, the reality uh, tends to make the the prognosis and outcome um, of both disorders worse uh, so this is just a quick survey um, you'll read a lot more in your textbook or perhaps you've already read the chapter thank you for listening and um, we'll quote-unquote see you in the next lecture have a good day. Bye-bye.